Welcome back to our series, Building the App, MVC Couch. In this tutorial, 4.3, we're going to talk about setting up ext.js for models and stores. We're going to focus on the M part of the MVC architecture, and that stands for models. What is a model? Let's go to the docs, and here we can read all about Sentia models. But basically, a model is simply a one-dimensional pattern for defining data objects. Models are like the blueprint that define how the data should be stored, but it doesn't hold the actual model data. I kind of view models like defining fields in a database table. You have to define the table first before you can stuff data in the table. That's what a model is kind of like. It defines the pattern for the data objects, but it doesn't hold the actual model data. That's what a store is for. So you can read about stores in the docs as well. What is a store? A store is basically a two-dimensional collection of model instances. Basically, a model instance is a record. In fact, you'll see the word record used a lot within the store class itself. Graphical components like grids, for example, rely on stores so that end users can interact with data in your application. And usually there's a one-to-one -one relationship with a grid component and a store. One grid for one store. So since stores are two-dimensional, they work great for uh, standard database tables in a relational database because database tables are also two-dimensional. But what if you're dealing with multi-dimensional data? What if you're storing complex nested JSON in a document database, and you need to be able to interact with all of that data in your ext.js4 application? In that case, you're going to need multiple stores in order to deal with all that data. Our application, MVC Couch, is going to require two stores in order to interact with the data stored in a CouchDB document. So this is where we kind of run into a little problem. ext.js4 stores are designed to write either one model instance at a time or a whole collection at a time to the back-end server. But a single store cannot write multiple stores worth of data at the same time. And when we're dealing with nested JSON on the server side, like MVC Couch, our application needs a way to write data from multiple stores. When we're writing data back to CouchDB, all the data representing an entire CouchDB document must be packaged in one JSON body, it must be formatted in the correct JSON structure, and it must be sent to CouchDB all at the same time. Now, if we can do this all on the client side, then CouchDB will take care of revisions and all the other back-end chores for us automatically. So how are we going to pull this off? Well, fortunately, part of the problem can be solved because ext.js4 gives us some new associations classes in their data package. And you can read all about it here in the docs, a very thorough explanation of their new associations classes. So now you can conveniently read in and stuff nested JSON data into as many stores as you need, and ext.js will keep track of their relationships. Yay! So let's take a look at a CouchDB document, and let's discuss our strategy with MVC Couch. Our strategy with MVC Couch is to take all CouchDB document JSON and then put the outer JSON here in a master user store. This is the store that has a REST proxy assigned to it. Then we'll use a second detail store to interact with our nested JSON only, this members property. The data in the details store is associated with individual records in the users store. And setting it up this way allows us to pre-configure a detail grid to use the details store. This details store is very dynamic. It's going to be constantly flushing its data and reloading new data every time a row is selected on the grid that uses the user store. So the detail store actually relies on a third store to get its actual data, and we use a special ext.js model method to create this third store, and then we use some light implementation code to keep the detail store data synced with the third store. 
And thanks to the new associations classes in ext.js4, we can do all of this with out-of-the-box functionality. However, this still does not help us when we're trying to write our document back to CouchDB. So this is where Peter Mueller's patch comes in. So what is Peter Mueller's solution? You need to define when an association should be treated as denormalized. So with his patch installed, you can configure a has many association as quote unquote inner. And this simple configuration will tell ext.js to do deep validation and deep serialization of all inner and outer associated JSON. It'll then package and write the data back to the server as one JSON body. As long as you configure your REST proxy correctly, this patch makes it possible to do full CRUD with out-of-the-box ext.js4 functionality. So let's dive back into our code and see how we've configured our models and stores. Let's first focus in on our doc model. Just like uh, any other class, we have to define our model and extend it. And we also talked about this requires property in previous discussion. Our fields property config is very similar to the MVC architecture guide example, except we're including a couple of extra properties here, optional and default value. They are provided as a convenience because oftentimes document databases like CouchDB are schemaless. And so if you don't have any values in a property, you don't need to store the property at all. Now, important thing to remember setting these default properties, the underscore ID and underscore rev fields are managed by CouchDB. We definitely always want to mark these as optional. If we post just the uh, data JSON without those two fields, then CouchDB will automatically assign a doc ID and a rev ID for us. Uh, as we discussed, ext.js4 has this new associations feature. And this is where we define a has many association. This model has many instances of the mvccouch.model.member model. This is the inner property. And this is where we tell this doc model that mvccouch.model.member is inner JSON to the doc model. Now let's talk about this ID property. Since we're only going to have one set of records as unique outer JSON per document, we're going to configure our doc model to use CouchDB's built-in underscore ID property as our model's ID property. And you'll notice I uh, identified it here. I set this property here. And I also set it down here in the proxy configuration because it's necessary to do that for reading and writing back to CouchDB. Now let's take some time to talk about our proxy config. You'll notice we're using a REST proxy as our type. And our doc model is the only model we're using a REST proxy with. This is the only way we're communicating to and from CouchDB. You notice I have a couple of URL properties set. The API property is pretty important. Here we set up the various URI segments that get attached to the URL when we do different operations. For create, update, and destroy, all I have to do is append the URI with MVC Couch, which is the database name. But for reading in, I want to query a view to get a collection of documents returned to me. This append ID property is important to set to true because when we do an HTTP put or an HTTP destroy, we definitely want to append our doc ID to the URI here because that's what CouchDB requires. You'll notice I've set the no cache param to false and I've overrided a lot of these params that get sent along in the URI because we don't want to be infusing CouchDB with, with items that it, it, it doesn't expect or need. Now let's talk about um, the readers and writers for a second. You notice it's just a JSON reader, but the root is rows. Let's look at the actual output of the CouchDB view here in a browser. And you'll notice that rows is a CouchDB property that's going to return an array of objects. But ext.js4 lets us dig a little deeper. We can ignore some of the outer metadata for each object by pointing to the record doc and only collect the value of that property. So we need to do this when we set up our reader config. 
If you look at the output of the CouchDB view, you'll notice that we don't want this stuff. We want to just pull in this doc property, pull in this object. And you'll notice it already has the ID and the rev and all the outer JSON plus all the inner JSON in one uh, JSON object. And the total property that we're going to use is called total rows, which corresponds with this total rows property here. And finally, uh, the writer is a very simple configuration. We just want to make sure we write all fields to true and that our root is blank because we don't want to include the object that we send back as the value of a property. We want to send it all as just one body of JSON. So that's just uh, one way that I've configured my proxy. There may be other ways of setting it up. Uh, this is just one way I know that works. Now let's talk about our member model. So here we define our class and we define our fields for this model. These fields correspond with each individual object in the member property array. These would represent users that belong to the user group. We set our belongs to association here to point to mvccouch.model.doc because that's what each of these model instances is going to belong to, an individual instance of the doc model. And we only need a memory proxy configured for this model. And the reason for this is because model instances created using this model are going to be created and destroyed and recreated and added to and, and interacted with quite dynamically by the end user in our application. And so a memory proxy is all we need. I just want to also point out an important thing about this belongs to association and it has many association in our doc model. You notice that we have all our fields defined correctly and that corresponds in our document with these fields here. But how do we make sure that the members property is named and defined correctly? That's a critical point of the configuration of the has many property in, in the doc model. This name here, members, has to match this name here, members. And because it's named that way, the JSON is going to be formatted correctly. So that's all I wanted to show you with the member model setup. Now let's talk about our stores. Let's talk about our users store. So you can see a very simple configuration for our users store. We're using our doc model to populate our users store. And of course, ext.js4 now lets you assign a proxy to your model. You don't have to store it directly to your store. So since we've already defined the REST proxy with our doc model, the user store will just use that proxy when communicating with the server. Uh, we have auto sync set to false because we do not want to sync our store unless the end user clicks a button. And we went ahead and sorted the data in this store by the group property. If there's several groups of the same name, then we'll sort again by the date created. Auto load is true because when we run the app, we want it to go ahead and load the data from the back end. So very simple configuration there. Our detail store is also a very simple configuration. We're pointing to the member model to define instances in this detail store. It's also being sorted, but this time by ID. And we have defined a few listeners to this store. And we'll explain the reasons why when we talk about implementation code in our next tutorial. But for now, we're just adding some load, add, and remove listeners so that when records are added and removed from the store, uh, certain functions do certain things. And when the store first loads, uh, certain things happen. But as you can see, the configuration for stores is very simple, and we can thank ext.js4 for that. Well, I've kind of run out of time, and I've had to rush a little bit, but I hope you've uh, benefited from this explanation of models and stores as they're used in MVC Couch. That concludes this tutorial, and we look forward to our next tutorial where we we'll discuss ext.js4 views, the V part of the MVC architecture, and we'll discuss quite a bit of implementation code to make all these things work together. So thanks for your time, and uh, I'll see you then.